Hey everybody. everybody, welcome to the Japanese supermarket grocery haul episode number one. Just before going to the topic, if you want to explore Japan from a Japanese perspective and from an American perspective, then slam that subscribe button and jam that notification bell. So, Dustin. Yep. What do you think about Japanese supermarket? Well, when I first moved to Japan, I thought the selection in Japanese supermarkets was actually less compared to ones in America because there's a lot of food items that I just can't buy here, even if I want, like really good cheeses or really good, like, wide variety of grains, like quinoa and all these kinds of bread items, things that I'm used to having as a Westerner. But once I got married to Ms. Akino over here, she opened a whole new world of food <laughs> items in these supermarkets. It's, there's things that I didn't even know existed, you know. There's the, the common foods you know as a foreigner. Sushi, ramen, all that stuff. But there's a lot of these cooking items, which I never knew existed. And it's really cool now. Like, it's fun actually just going to the supermarket. It's kind of like a treasure hunt, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that's part of the reason why we're starting the series is because she basically is going to teach me about these different food items they have at the grocery store, right? Yep. So this time we got five items which include used pasta sauce, amazake, matcha toast spread, soup monaka, yep. and anindofu for dessert. Yeah, so we got five different items, various kinds of items. So let's start with that first item, which is the yuzu pasta. It's made with the Japanese citrus fruits, which is the yuzu. And I don't think I've ever actually had some citrusy pasta sauce before. So I was kind of interested to try this out. And this pack just comes with the sauces themselves. That doesn't actually come with the pasta, right? Yeah. But what kind of pasta are you supposed to use with this Akina? When we say pasta, we tend to think of spaghetti. So maybe spaghetti is the best choice for okay. this. But any kind of pasta you have, I think, would actually work. And basically, yeah, all you do is you cook up your pasta. So you got two different packs inside. You got one, which is basically like a salty, oily pack, which has the sauce itself. Then there's another one, which is like a hurdy kake, which is kind of like spices and herbs dried up, which you sprinkle on the top. Then you just mix it up and eat it. And um, I don't know, what did you think, Akina? I thought that was pretty good. Um, it had nice yuzu flavor properly. Yeah. And it was kind of best, like shoyu based flavor so that pasta was very Japanese and kind of different from usual Italian pasta so yeah. that could be like a good change. I liked it because it just tasted like yeah fusion between Italian and Japanese foods and yeah the fact that it was citrus flavored to me was kind of a new thing for pasta and it wasn't too salty it wasn't too oily like it was a very good balance so yeah I liked it a lot and um, it was just easy to make too so that was another plus so I would say overall I would recommend that item what do you think? Yeah, so do I. Item number two, amazake. Yeah, amazake is usually a drink that you can get in Japan during festival seasons or especially in the winter, but it can actually be enjoyed any season of the year. It's just that sometimes it's served hot, sometimes it's served cold. And this drink is like actually a byproduct of making rice wine, right? Yes, sake. <laughs> yeah. So it's called amazake, which basically means like sweet sake. And it doesn't actually have any alcohol in it. But um, whatever the case, like I always thought this is a drink you could only buy fresh or you can only buy like, you know, actually in liquid form. But they had a powdered version in the grocery store. And have you ever had the powdered one before this time? Yes. Yes? How was it? <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it would be good to be powdered. I thought like, oh, well, it's obviously better if it's just the liquid form. But when we made this one, which was a lemon one, this is like maybe a summer flavor? Or yeah, what? summer limited one. Okay. Yeah, they don't usually have a lemon one, but when we tried this like lemon flavored one, first of all, all you do is just put this block in the glass. I didn't think you'd be able to dissolve in water, like especially cold water, because we use cold water, it's summer now. But it did dissolve very easily, and yeah, like you just stir it up. And it's like the real amazake, right? It's very starchy and it has little pieces of mm -hmm. rice, right? Yeah, like sometimes if you have those freeze-dried thing, they could be like really fake. Ish okay. or like half in between, like real. Yeah. But this one tasted like very legit, didn't it? 
Yeah, aside from the lemon aspect, which I never had, like, it did taste like the same consistency with a little, like, lumps of rice and stuff in there. It tasted like the real thing, and actually the lemon flavor wasn't too strong. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just right, so I thought it was pretty refreshing, and it's cool. Like, I, I like to try it. What do you think? Yeah, I liked it too, and <laughs> amazake is supposed to be good for your health in Julie, especially in Julie's summer. There you go, baby. Yeah, like, you lose a lot of mineral, you know? Okay, it's got some electrolytes or something. So the next item that we tried out is seaweed monaca soup. Yeah, this is a monaca. I had one of these things a while ago. It's like basically this wafer thing. It's got all the soup ingredients inside this wafer and then what do you do to make it, Akina? You kind of crack it just a little bit and okay. then pour some hot water directly in the hole. Yeah, just pour it on there and then it's basically ready to eat like immediately, right? Yes. So actually, yeah, we tried it out, like the Monaca becomes kind of soggy, so yeah, like that might not be what most people are used to in the West. Yeah, it's kind of halfway between like um, noodle-ish. It's between a noodle and a dumpling or something, but you try to cut off little pieces and you bite into it. And um, then that broth, it really tasted quite seaweedy, actually. Like, mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah, I think it, it was very salty, but a more of a seaweedy ocean flavor. And I think that this is more of a soup that I would want to have in the winter time. What do you think, Akino? I think I don't really think about seasons. It tasted like um, just normal soup to me. Okay. Maybe just a seaweedy version. Yeah, somehow I think just the fact that you're having like a salty soup to me it seems like a winter thing. Thing, but yeah, you could have it any time, I guess. Um, overall, it was pretty good. So now we're gonna move on to the next item, which is the... Matcha Toast Spread. Yeah, this one looked really interesting. Like, there were some items in the store which you could spread on toast that were not peanut butter and were not jelly. So my mind was totally blown. And one of the items was this matcha spread. I like matcha. I like spreading things on bread. So I thought it could be good. And uh, anyway, we tried it out. We toasted some bread and we put some of that matcha spread on there. And um, what did you think, Akina? It was not really quite as expected. Yeah, I guess for me, the flavor was pretty weak. Like, matcha generally has a pretty distinctive and somewhat strong flavor. It's not overpowering, but it's got a pretty strong flavor. And to me, I didn't really taste much matcha, like barely at all. It was more just like mildly sweet goo. I don't know. I mean, it's good, but I feel like I would have to use a lot to get that flavor goodness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did feel some of matcha, but if you know the difference between matcha and normal green tea, uh -huh. so it was kind of towards, lean towards to normal green tea. Yeah. So it's not, it was not really green tea-ish, like matcha-ish. Yeah. And the picture was showing kind of more creamy thing and I was kind of expected some more like, you know, creamy, mi milky thing. The picture looked almost like icing or something to me. It looked like a turbo spread, but actually when we tried it, yeah, it was not so strong in flavor. And as you mentioned, yeah, it's more like green tea. Now we're gonna move on to the fifth and final item we purchased, which is the... Anin tofu. Yeah, now this is a very popular sweet. I guess in Asia in general, but yeah, in Japan, it's a dessert item. And onion is what? Is that almonds, Akina? Yep. So it's like an almond tofu, but it's not really tofu, right? It's more just like a... More like pudding or something Kind of like, like a gelatin pudding-like thing. And I've always liked it, but I didn't know that you can make it on your own with a very simple pack. I mean, what did you have to do to make this? So the only thing you have to do is to put the powder out, then put some hot water, then stir it until the powder dissolves. Yeah. Then put some milk in it, then just put them in the cup, then put them in the fridge. That's it. Yeah, we put that in the fridge and then after that you wait. How long do we have to wait? Maybe just a couple hours just yeah. until they get firm enough. Yeah, solidified. And then there's that uh, the jelly stuff you put on the top too. It's a syrup. Yeah, you put that syrup on, you mix um, some water with that syrup. Yep. And then, yeah, anyway, it's very good. Like, it's very simple and subtle, but like, 
to me it's really nice. Yeah, especially maybe in summer, if you put some like frozen berry or something like that, it's uh, so yeah. like yeah. refreshing. The pudding part is um, sweet, but not too sweet. Then you have like somewhat sour fruit on, on the top yeah. with the sweet syrup. Then that makes a good mixture of the taste. And the texture of the pudding is like really soft as well. Yeah. And it just feels nice to feel how soft it is on your tongue, right? I was loving it, baby. So overall, those are some real good items. I think we're gonna be doing some more videos about this in the future. But if you personally want to try some incredible items from a grocery store in Japan, we actually have a new service we're introducing from our Patreon, which is a subscription box called the Japanese supermarket box. I've personally been sending convenience store boxes for a few years now and so the items I'm sending in these are totally different. Yeah, you can make a dinner out of the box. Yeah, it's all about things you can make and taking stuff from a supermarket, which is a whole new world. So if you're interested in trying out some of these boxes, feel free to check out our Patreon link down below in the description box. Or if you want to check out some of our other food videos that we previously did, feel free to check out our video about the 20 types of sushi that most tourists never heard of before. And as always, thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching this video, video everybody. everybody.